Today, I have three chess opening traps for you, three famous traps from TikTok, but there is a trick. One of them is totally wrong, which means you're gonna get crushed if you play it. While you're watching the video, I'm gonna make some comments. Some of them will help you and some won't. Try to find the trap that you should never play. This looks like the French defense. Very solid opening. But then in this video, he says that there is an impossible checkmate. He takes the bishop, now he's gonna push the pawn. All right, develop his pieces, nothing too crazy there. This bishop, the white square bishop is, yes, eyeing the king, very dangerous always. And now he plays h4. When someone plays h4, his idea is to just go with the knight on g5 to just go forward with his pieces and try to checkmate. And this is what he does. So he's sacrificing the knight. The guy takes it immediately without thinking. And let me tell you something. When your opponent plays a move and he takes his drink like this one did, saying like, I just got it. I just calculated everything or it just fell in my trap. So if someone does this, take some time before you play. So now he sacrifices the bishop, the king, Apparently, he's forced to take. Now there is a discovery check with the rook. The king goes back and now he sacrifices the third piece, which is the rook. Now the queen comes in, check, and he pushes the pawn. All right, rook f5, check, and this is a checkmate. Was this a mistake or not? I don't know. I'm gonna explain at the end each trap, and I'm gonna tell you which one you should never play. Let's move to trap number two. The modern or pick defense for now, nothing too crazy. He develops his pieces, knights before bishops. And now the opponent plays knight d7. And this move actually turns out apparently is a mistake because you take, now the king is forced to take. I mean, there is no point actually calculating the other variations, but then the knight jumps in, check. And it doesn't matter where you go. Actually, if you go there, the queen on f3 is checkmate. And now he saw it, so he comes back, but then the knight comes here and it's already the end. Was this a mistake or not? Let's see the last one. The tennis and gambit. He goes with check. And now, he doesn't take the pawn with the knight, which could be a possibility he plays the bishop on e2. Black immediately sees a queen and he's gonna take it without even thinking about it. This is a checkmate because the knight is controlling both squares. Did you get it right? Let me know in the comments which one you think is a total disaster if you play it. So let's go with the first one. That was a French defense. You push the pawns in the center. This guy counter. This is a typical French defense so far. Nobody made any mistake. Black develops the knight, which is fine. And now the bishop here. He exchanged the knight. Now he pushes the pawn. You are forced to come back with your bishop. And he plays bishop d3. Here in this situation, usually black should counter attack in the center because if white wants to attack on the side, you're always in chess, not always, but almost always, you should counter in the center to have some counter attack. And here, this is what should have been done. It's just this move and trying to bother actually this pawn. This is a very bad move because this is not really a developing move. I mean, what is this bishop doing more than actually being on c8? I don't know. White plays perfectly. He develops his pieces in a very harmonious way. And now he goes with h4. He uses the fact that black is what we call underdeveloped. Why? Because, well, white is ready to castle. All the minor pieces, what we call minor pieces, knights and bishops, are already out. Uh, white almost finished his development, but then there is this knight here that is absolutely horrible, still at home. And these pieces here that are just not doing much. So that's the problem. And the way to actually exploit this with a move like this, thinking, you know what, the knight is gonna come here, the queen is gonna come here, and I just wanna checkmate, that's what I wanna do. So he saw this, so he's like, you know what, you're not coming with your knight, because now I'm controlling it with the pawn. But white doesn't care. Usually when you have a strategic edge 
in the position, what happens is that you have a tactical justification, which means a peace sacrifice that works and stuff. When you have a good position, this is what usually happens. Now, he took. Now he took on h7. Obviously, coming here with the, with the king doesn't help you because the queen comes here. And you're checkmating two moves. Let me show you just this. You push the pawn and this is checkmate. So I don't see any mistake in this one so far. You are forced to actually take. And now he took the pawn and there is a discovery. Obviously, if you come with the king here, then I just bring my queen here and it's game over. You're going to come here, but then, you know, I just bring my rook and I'm going to go here and it's going to be game over. So this doesn't work as well, right? It doesn't seem to be a problem, everything that he played. And here, amazing, he sacrifices the rook. You are forced to take it. Now the queen comes in, the king moves, and he pushes the pawn, creating, like, suffocating this poor king, basically blocking these two squares, threatening to come with the queen here and checkmating on the next move. But the biggest problem in this situation was, obviously, if the knight is coming here and the guy takes a drink, maybe don't just, you know, take this, have some, you know, awareness, self-awareness and be like, you know what, I'm feeling the danger here. So I'm just not going to take it because this is what he wants. The right move in this situation is to just play h6. And you're not in trouble. And actually black is totally equal as a position here. If he takes, you take with the rook. And this is how you want, you want to be playing here. There is a variation though that is a little bit challenging if you don't know it. He checks. You go here and now he plays bishop g6 and you cannot take. Let me show you. If you take, give me your queen because it's a check and a fork. So you cannot take the bishop, but you have other ways to play. Now play c5. He's going to check, obviously, but you're going to have to give your rook for a knight, which is not great. But it turns out that here, after taking in the center, he takes back, you finally develop this knight. It turns out that actually having both bishops, this bishop is going to come here. He's going to have an amazing diagonal. Let me show you a few moves. The queen moves because she was attacked. You go here, attacking the bishop, who has only one square. Now you go here, you attack the queen. When the queen moves, you come here. Now he's going to castle, for instance, and you take this pawn. In this situation, the king is pretty safe, actually, here. The bishop is going to come here, the rook here. And you have a good position with black. It's perfectly fine. So that was the way to defend against it. And the first trap, basically after taking, is not a blunder. It's not wrong. Let's try to see if it was trap number two. So trap number two was a sort of modern defense and playing bishop g7. Okay, fianchetto. You put your, your bishop there, he develops d6, and now he plays bishop c4. Usually what you do in chess, because you're gonna, you want to castle as quickly as possible, this is the knight that you try to put out first, not this one. And yeah, you get punished in chess straight away when you make a mistake. So here, when you do this, what happens is that this square is going to become a target. He sacrificed the bishop because when you take, he gives a check with the knight. If you go here, this is checkmate already. So you can't do this. And you saw in the video, he tried to go there. And then if you come back here, then the knight comes here and this queen doesn't have any square and just this knight is going to grab it on the next move. I don't see any mistake. In this one, obviously the biggest mistake was to develop this knight. You now know that trap number three is the one you should never play. So in his video, the guy says that you start like this. He starts with what we call this move is a Scandinavian opening. And now he decides to go with a gambit, which means he doesn't actually take this pawn. He decides to develop a knight instead because he has something in mind. After you take, he wants to play the Tennyson gambit and puts his knight here. And obviously, let me, let me give you a rule, a general rule. When you have a knight that comes on the fifth rank, usually pushing, trying to just, you know, get rid of the knight and pushing a pawn, you know, to get rid of him, always leads to disaster. A beginner would just play this move, not understanding that he's actually making this diagonal super weak. 
and he gets punished with this move, queen h5, check. Because when you push, well, first of all, there is this move. The knight can take the pawn because the pawn cannot take because the queen would take the rook, right? But then in this trap that this guy is showing you, he's saying to play bishop e2. Why is this totally wrong? Because he says, okay, if you take the queen, he takes, and this is checkmate. But wait, 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 I'm not going to take the queen. I'm not going to take the queen. There is also a piece here that is attacked. I don't have to take the queen. So I can just take this knight. And what are you going to do now? Because how do you justify the fact that you just gave me a piece? Because even if you take here, for instance, I just, yes, you're attacking my rook, but I just have to develop my knight here. And look at my position. I'm a piece up. So be careful to not play this one. I hope you got the right answer. And I'll see you on the next video.